All right, so we said all that stuff. We just never wrote it. So here we go. To accomplish a supersaturated, oops, I never wrote saturated here. A supersaturated solution, it's accomplished by increasing the temperature of a saturated. All right. All right, so we said all that stuff. We just never wrote it. So here we go. To accomplish a supersaturated, oops, I never wrote saturated here. A supersaturated solution, it's accomplished by increasing the temperature of a saturated solution having the excess solid dissolve and then letting the system slowly cool undisturbed. All right, so that's how we cause a supersaturated solution. Now, we need to know the difference between the three. Just think about it, and it should make sense if you speak English. Now, if you don't, I'm sorry. That was rude. But anyway, super means more, so supersaturated. You are holding more than you can. Un means less, so you're holding less than you can. And then saturated is just what we're talking about. So saturated means we're holding exactly as much as we can. All right, now let's shift gears and let's talk about solubilities of gases. These are a piece of cake. Now, think about carbon dioxide in your soda pot. All right, now we learned in our lab that if we put salt in water and we agitated it, the salt would dissolve more. But now think about your pop that you bought. You take the lid off and you shake it. What happens to the gases inside that liquid? All right, they come out, correct? So the solubility of gases behaves opposite of solids. I'm sorry my writing is horrible on this. Um, I have better writing than that, but this pen is just a fraction of a second delayed, so you can't really see what you're writing until you've already written it. All right, so the solubility of gases are opposite of solids. All right, if I agitate, so agitation and increased, so if I heat my pop, temperature decreases the solubility of a gas. Okay, so think about it. Warm pop that has been shaken is flat. All the gases escape. All right, now really that's about all you have to know. The last thing here in part C is called Henry's Law. He says at a given temperature, the pressure of a gas in a liquid is, oh, I messed that up. Hold on. Stop writing. That's solubility. You'll see pressure later. I'm sorry. All right. At a given temperature, the pressure of a gas in a liquid is directly proportional to the pressure of the gas above the liquid. Okay, what that means, and let's draw it, you're probably sick of my illustrations, but whatever. <laughs> okay, that is the worst 20 ounce pop bottle I've ever tried to draw. All right, pretend all right, this looks more like a two liter. It looks like garbage. That's all I know. So here's your pop. It's in here. You have not opened it yet. All right. We know, all of us, we've opened the beverage before. We open it, and we get that little sound. Right? All right. And what that is is CO2 gas leaving the pop bottle that was in this area right here. All right, now that gas was in there for a reason. That gas increased the pressure. If I increase the pressure above the liquid, which is right here, it forces the bubbles to stay in the liquid. So anytime you've opened a pop and you hear that noise, you know what's coming next for some random reason. 
the bubbles all start to rise up, you know you better put that lid back on in a hurry so it doesn't overflow or spray. And the reason that you do that, you put the lid tight back again. All right, that causes these bubbles that are coming out, they come out, they increase the pressure again, and it keeps more bubbles in the solution. And we don't have our overflow. We're done.